Hello, welcome back to Virtually Real, where we are continuing our PSVR 2 first impressions. And today we have a very special guest. This is Sarah. Now, the reason Sarah is so special is because way back in 2016, when the first PSVR came out, Sarah was actually at my house. I was too, yeah. And she got to play on the first night where... What game did we play? Your first experience was uh, PlayStation World's The Shark Encounter. Oh, that's right. Yes. Remember that? I do. I almost threw the headset at the wall. <laughs> it's very strange, isn't it? Because that was the first time any of us had really tried VR. Mm. And it was quite terrifying. Yeah. It was that kind of, oh, oh what, what's actually happening here? And now with PSVR 2 coming out, even though this is the third or fourth video I've done, you did come over opening night mm. and you got to play the flagship game Horizon Call of the Mountain. But before we get into the game, let's talk about the differences because you played PSVR 1 extensively. A lot, yes. A beat saber fiend. Yeah, massive fan. Um, how do you find the new headset compared to the old one? Oh, it's, it's leagues above. The old one I found, I really struggled to get it close enough to my face and for it to feel like it sat on my head properly. I also think just clarity of the, the actual visuals you get through the headset. You could kind of almost see a reflection in the first one and it just didn't feel, you, it almost took you away from some of the games because you knew you were wearing a headset. When I put the second one on, the new one, it was a whole different experience. It completely blacks everything out. You can't see through the bottom, can't th see through the sides. Once you're in there, particularly with the headphones on, it's there's nothing to distract you from just being in the game. Okay, well, let's get to the game. So Horizon Call of the Mountain was the the big flagship game from Sony. So um, I don't know if you'll call it a system seller, but it was the thing that they featured in their marketing. It's a first-party title. Um, how did you find it? I, I loved it. I, you'll see my reaction when I first put it on and the game opens, you're, you're in this boat going down this beautiful river. And the graphics are just incredible. It's beautiful no matter where you look. And the depth of detail from right in front of you to way back where you can see mountains and birds flying above the mountains. And it's just so immersive and realistic. And everywhere you look, there's something amazing to look at. Looking down into the water, touching the water and the feedback you get. It's just I thought the visuals, it actually blew my mind a bit and I, you'll probably see I'm pretty silent for a while because I was just, it was almost a bit of a sensory overload, taking it all in, looking at all the details. Um, incredible. They've done such a good job. Oh, I like this. It's a bit, oh, oh, oh my golly gosh. Wow. Oh my God, wow. Still in so the boat ride, it's pretty static. You're just in there. And I, I feel like it's a nice introduction because you're, you're not moving around to have to, to do anything. It's like, oh, I'm just going to sit here and just take take in mm -hmm. what's actually happening. You can look at your hands and the, the adaptive touch so you can actually see your fingers and make different hand shapes yeah, and stuff like cool. that. It's pretty cool. This is incredible. Oh, I'm doing peace sign. Is Don's grasp, and that's where, that's where we're taking it. <gasps> this is actually ten times better. This is incredible. Why do I keep doing the peace sign? Ooh! Oh my god, it vibrates. Shit, that thing's huge. Wow, this is so good. <gasps> What's that noise? Oh my god, they look like velociraptors. Is there any fishies or anything? Oh! Do I have a weapon? Oh, can I have a gun? And then, of course, you get attacked by what's called the snap moor. Yep. Uh, snap moor, snap jaw, I'm not sure. Basically a mechanical crocodile. Yep. <laughs> and it throws you into the water. And yes. it gives you no instruction, but you just sat there in the water. And you played this game before. No, no, I played it first. So I knew what was coming. Yeah. But you had the same reaction where you're in the water and you're, you're there for a few seconds and then you go. Yeah. 
it's can, very, I, can I swim? Yeah. And it's like, oh. and it just works. Yeah. And it felt, it was, everything was in, intuitive. Like you kind of knew, okay, I'm swimming and oh, I can see a ladder. I'll swim to that and I'll grab that. And it, it just, you didn't need instructions. And that's something rare in a game. I find that a lot of games, particularly the more complicated ones, they really have to guide you through the process. Whereas this was just so intuitive. Ooh, it's a little water crocodile. This is actually a bit breathtaking. It's beautiful. <gasps> oh. What was that? <gasps> oh gosh. Oh wow, amazing. Can I swim? This is very cool. Very cool. Oh. Wow. The level of detail in this. <gasps> oh my God, amazing. Oh my God, amazing. This is great. Oh. <laughs> okay. Forward. Hold on. Gotcha, buddy. Oh, oh, no, nah, bit of a glitch. I gotcha. I gotcha. Oh, God. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, shit, get out of here. After the dock, you started to climb. Yes. Now, I'm not a fan of heights. <laughs> um, are you? Are you all right on heights? I'm all right with heights. Okay. But I immediately got a bit of vertigo. Um, not because of the height. Like I, be, I, I looked down a couple of times and that was fine. I think it was just the rock face is quite close to you and you, the speed in which you climb, it just, it did make me feel a bit, just a little bit off centre. I sort of thought, oh, I'm a bit unsure of my bounds. <laughs> oh, no, wrong way. This is like a workout. Oh, oh my gosh. So, wow. Go there or make a break for it. This is amazing. Just like the detail. Dawn's grasp. See what Marana wants. Oh. Oh god, I feel a bit dizzy. Oh, oh no. I've got it's height scary. <laughs> <gasps> oh no, the meme girl. Okay, so the climbing mechanic, yep, I got vertigo. I was like, whoa, whoa, oh yeah, okay. And we, you get up, there's a small, a couple of small huts, and this is where you start to really explore the mechanic of what you can do with your hands because there's things to touch and play with. How was that? It was very cool. There was little maracas, a tambourine, um, and a few things you could just go around and interact with. I think I found a flute at some point. And by blowing, it would blow across the flute, which I, I don't even know how that works, but that was very cool. I guess by the hands, hands, um, <laughs> <laughs> as I'm talking it through, I'm figuring it out. Uh, but I thought that was amazing. I actually did that, put it down, and then I went back and got it again because I was like, actually, that was really cool. Oh, can I keep this? Oh. I shouldn't do that if someone's after me. Looks like a refugee camp. Where are they running from? So I'm guessing you don't really collect things. Oh my god, that's very cool. How does that work? That's amazing. The flute. <laughs> what? Uh, you and I both missed the uh, wall cave painting mm. part, which yeah. we'll, we'll go back and play. Yeah. There will be a full review on the channel soon of, of the game. Um, but we found ourselves facing off our first watcher, our yeah. first battle, which locks you in. So it's not free roaming. You're kind of in a, in a circle mm. as you move around. How did you find the combat with the bow? I loved it. I think that kind of 
combat style suits VR really well. I think because it's uh, it's not guns and things like that, but bow and arrows where you're grabbing the bow, you're drawing it and you're shooting it. It's very, it uses both your hands. It's, I think that sort of combat is exactly what VR is made for. So I loved that. I loved the dodging around it, um, when to fire the arrow. I think I got a few good headshots. Um, I loved that. I would have, I really enjoy that kind of combat style. They've done that very well. I, I, the, the grin on my face, it was like, oh, draw, yeah. knock, pull. Yeah. Yeah. It's like living my ultimate Legolas Lord of the Rings fantasy. <gasps> Can I get the rat? Oh shit, it's one of those. I'm scared, is it gonna jump out at me? Oh my god. Ah! <gasps> Shiver me timbers. Oh my golly gosh. <laughs> this is really scary. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, I'm not very good at getting a weapon out. Oh, right in the face. Yes. <gasps> Oh, he almost got me then. Oh, yes. Guys, that was quite stressful. Can I get anything from him? Can I keep it? I thought it was amazing, so. Okay, so would you like to complete the game or play the game again? Absolutely. I think I could definitely go and play a lot more of it. Um, I do think I thought it was mostly a climbing game um, that sort of seemed to be the meat of the game. And I think if I played hours and hours of that, it, I would probably get a bit tired of it. Um, but that mixed with the combat and kind of the interactive elements of the game, I think it could keep you very well entertained and in the game for a few hours. Oh, the climbing makes me feel a bit dizzy. Oh, these are crickety. Oh. Okay, absolutely amazing. I could spend hours in here. Oh, oh gosh. <laughs> I knew I didn't like her. I think by the end of that 15 minute intro, I was kind of Get it, uh, when I was climbing, I was like, oh, hurry up and get this over and done with so I can get to the next thing. So I can imagine over six to seven hours of that, uh, it, it might get a bit old. Well, we'll give it a go. Yep, and, willing to try. And we'll see what happens. Okay, well, great. Well, you're obviously going to come over again at some point and yep. play the PSVR 2. We are going to leave it here. Um, always like and subscribe if you like this content. And the next time you join us, I think you're going to be seeing Rachel Bust some moves playing synth riders. Uh, we'll see you then. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Every sign off is terrible. Every, oh, every single one.